Superfoods, the latest word on everybody's tongues. It is said that it is exceptional for weight loss, body healing and even mind enhancing. If you're not adding them into your diet, you're missing out. Scientific deep dive time? I think yes. Oh, and if you're wondering where my beard went, it's Movember, Male Cancer Awareness Month, and in today's video, we're also going to chat about cancer. But more on that later. Avocado, cranberries, goji berries, and quinoa are foods that are widely considered to be superfoods. Now, the term superfood doesn't really have a textbook description. However, the essence of the word boils down to a low-volume food that is exceptionally rich and dense in certain macro or micronutrients chemical structures that are considered unprecedentedly advantageous to a person's health. That sentence is about as complicated to say in front of a camera as superfoods are to explain. <laughs> so let me put it in simple terms. Small food, much nutritional value, big punch, very good for your health. On the screen you will see goji berries, cranberries, quinoa and all of the benefits they claim to bring. Notice this sentence being repeated with all three of them. Antioxidants. This singular attribute these foods possess gives them the bragging rights to be called cancer-fighting foods. Why, you might ask? Give me 10 seconds to explain the scientific principle. You see, most cancers are basically caused by cellular damage. So when the cell undergoes replication, like most cells have to on a daily or monthly basis, this damage results in a replication issue. The science world sometimes calls it a transcription error. In essence, this cell duplication error gets caused by some of the DNA data that just wasn't there anymore, or that has changed. And when the cell got copied again due to that initial cellular damage, that new cell then unfortunately starts to grow abnormally big or dysfunctional. And this is what we know as cancer. So you might be wondering, how would something like goji berries protect me against DNA level damage to my cells? Well, we have to look back to where those errors came from. What caused the cellular damage in the first place? So let me explain it in story mode. This is John. John loves to go for bike rides. He loves it so much, in fact, that he goes out three times a week. After every bike ride, John sits down to sip on his favorite drink while breathing in the fresh city air. Without knowing it, John's body is going through what we call oxidative stress. You see, John's body produces free radicals while exercising. And while he was sitting outside breathing in that fresh air, free radicals also entered his body. What are free radicals, you may ask? Free radicals are extremely volatile molecules. They bind to almost anything and wreak havoc in the system. What happens in the body is basically what you're seeing on screen right now. Dangerous. Luckily, we have science, and the awesome part of science is we now know of this and can battle it. We know that these free radicals have a higher attraction to certain molecules than others, like antioxidants. See where the name comes from? Oxidative stress, antioxidants. Anyways, one of the many benefits of superfoods are that they are usually very antioxidant rich. So instead of those super volatile free radicals binding to healthy cells, damaging them, they actually bind to antioxidants instead, protecting the body from oxidative cellular damage. Whether the superfood benefits outweighs the risks, however, is the question. Risks, you might ask. What possible risk might there be, Stefan? The niche food industry really isn't regulated nearly as much as big commercial food lines are. And that means the places these foods come from are often very rural. Big companies that package, label and distribute these niche foods to superstores source their products from all over the world. Oftentimes picking the cheapest farmers in the middle of some third world country because, well, they're easy to bully and take advantage of. What most superfood enthusiasts or biohackers don't always consider. Biohackers are what we call people who are overly obsessed with making themselves superhumans. Anyways, what they don't always consider is that what these rural farmers do to their crops are shockingly outdated and outright dangerous. Not only do they oftentimes completely destroy ecosystems, leaving nothing but deserts behind, but they also spray their crops with super cheap, very dodgy, unregulated pesticides, which we then end up eating, possibly putting our bodies in an even unhealthier place than where we started which practically defeats the purpose behind why you would add the superfoods in your diet in the first place. 
I'm honestly torn in two when it comes to superfoods. I think the science is onto something when it comes to these nutrient-dense foods, but it's just not sustainable yet. Honestly, some major development still needs to take place behind the scenes before I can comfortably back the idea of mass distribution of these foods. Nevertheless, that's my video for today and man, I love YouTube. Just while making this video, I thought of two ideas of videos I'm gonna make now, which is how superfoods can help you lose weight super fast and two, how superfoods are BS. <laughs> I know, contradicting. Wait till you see what I'm gonna say in those videos quality content. If you like this video, please click the like button below. It sounds mundane, but trust me, every time you don't click that button, a dog loses its toy. You don't want to be that person, do you? Click the like button below. <laughs> Anyways, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.